Welcome back to the Nurturing Case channel. Today I want to talk about falling in love after narcissistic abuse. So if you're struggling and you've given up or you are still hopeful but you're not quite sure how to navigate it, do keep watching. of love has been severely damaged as a result of any encounter with a narcissist. Even if it's not a romantic encounter, they make you question how you see the world. They make you question how people behave. They make you wonder, is everyone really who they say they are or are they all displaying this false sense of self? And so, learning to trust and to fall in love again and more importantly to trust yourself and fall in love again can seem near on impossible but to me not falling in love again giving up on love is a travesty it is one of the worst things that could happen following such a devastating relationship and the reason is that love is the most powerful force in the universe and there might be some of you out there that don't have that way of thinking and that's fine this might not be for you but to me love heals love lifts you love puts that smile back on the face love slowly but surely builds your your confidence and your trust in the world and in yourself again so to me love is an essential part of the healing process now what i'm going to talk about isn't love with another person, another human being, it's love with yourself. So it's about falling in love with yourself. I'm, I'm going to talk about why. Why is it important that you love yourself first and what does that really mean? It's something that's banded around, but actually, what the hell does it mean? So it's important that you learn to love yourself first because, number one, if you don't love you, how can you expect anyone else to? Number two, if you don't love yourself properly and healthily, you're gonna attract people who love you in the same way as you love yourself. So if you pick fault with yourself, if you think that you don't deserve the happy ever after, then that's exactly what you're gonna attract. You're gonna attract people that take advantage of that. They're gonna attract people who show you the dream that you don't think that you deserve, and then they're going to whip it away from you, which is pretty much what, what's probably just happened for you. And when you learn to love yourself, you'll never hurt you. You might disappoint you, you might be annoyed with yourself, but you will always love yourself. It's consistent, it's unconditional. And that's what we should always strive for, whether it be with ourselves or someone else, we should strive for unconditional love. We don't love them because they have, of how they make us feel about ourselves. We don't love them because of the money they can bring to the table. We don't love them because of their job. We don't love them because everyone else is jealous that we're with them. We don't love them because they fill a part of us that, that we believe is empty. We just love. We just love in the same way. This is the best thing I can compare it to. I love my dog. He's annoying at times. He frustrates me at times. But I love him and I don't expect anything back from him. I don't get angry at him if he doesn't love me. I know he loves me, but I don't get angry at him for that. I just expect him to be him. And I love him for that. And that's how you should love yourself and other people. And we often get confused with love, thinking it's about that how they can meet our needs, how they can be an attachment for us. And it's not. Love and attachment are very different things. Love is pure. Love is joy. Love is happiness. Love doesn't hurt anyone. Love doesn't cause pain. Love doesn't make you cry. That's what pure, unconditional love is. And other people aren't always going to be able to do that because they're human and they do have their own needs and they make mistakes and they're, they're selfish at times. But when you love yourself unconditionally, when you shower yourself with that love, you'll always feel it 
and you'll attract just that. So how do you go about loving yourself? Well, for me, it was about getting in touch with who I truly am. And when you've been in a narcissistic encounter, you change. You, you can become someone you don't recognise. You behave in ways that you wouldn't dream of normally recognising. And so you do massively fall out of love with yourself. You, you end up despising your behaviour and wishing that you behave differently. And then when you come out of it and you learn more about narcissism, suddenly you go, well, it's all their fault. They did that. And actually, for me, it was about accepting my role in that. And this isn't about blame whatsoever. The narcissist behaviour is disgusting, but it is what it is. And it's how do you protect yourself going forward? And like I say, for me, it was about how did I behave? What was I bringing to the table? What can I change? Because if you're sat there thinking, it's all them, it's all them, they did all this, this is totally their fault, which... Their behaviour is their fault, that's their responsibility. But the whole picture, the big picture, you can look at the things that you might have done, what, what you maybe were missing in your life and what attracted you to them. And if you can recognise those things, then you can stop this from ever happening again. But if you think it's just how people behave, it's just random, they just pick me at random, pluck me out of the air because I'm a nice person, then... You may, it may happen again for you. Like I said, this isn't about guilt, this isn't about shame, this isn't about saying, I'm at fault, I did something wrong. This is about saying, who do I truly want to be? What was I presenting? How did I change? Anything like that, a lot of self-reflection. So I'll talk about myself, just to, to give you the example, not because I'm a narcissist. But <laughs> it's, I was attracted to the man in my life. This is just a normal relationship, not a narcissistic one, but I'm giving you it as an example, um, taking away the narcissistic element. I was attracted to him because he needed me, and I love to be needed. I have this desire to heal, and I want to help people, that typical empath um, character. And so he was hurt, he... He's a good man, he's the best man, he's such a such a great person, but he was hurting and I wanted to heal that. I said to him once, I want to wrap you in my wings and take care of you forever. And that nurturing side of me attracted someone who didn't know how to love themselves. And yet I expected him to love me. And at the start, I was very unconditional in my love for him. I showered him with everything he needed. It was all about... Um, I just love him for him. I love him for all of, all that he is, and I wanted all that. But as we as you go through relationships, and this is normal, this is exactly what happens in normal relationships. Obviously, for the narcissist, it becomes even stronger. So I'll, I'll draw across from that. But for me, what happened was I suddenly wanted more and more. I wanted I wanted to get married. I wanted to live together. I wanted babies. I wanted. I wanted the whole package, there's nothing wrong with that, that's absolutely fine, but it became conditional, the love that I felt became conditional on him fulfilling those needs, and that wasn't fair at all, I had to meet my own needs, and it wasn't fair of me to expect him to meet them, now I'm not saying you shouldn't want things, but it's about, you can still love someone and work together towards a goal, as opposed to, I'll only love you if you give me that. And that's not how it was with us. I'm just saying that it it did become, I admit that it did become conditional. But what happens with a narcissist is it's totally conditional. They only love you because of, and I say love in inverted commas, because of the things that you can give them. And when you can't give them that, they're angry at you and they'll want something else. And then it's all about meeting their needs. And so in order for you not to attract another narcissist, you have to meet your own needs. You have to put your needs first. You have to decide what makes me happy. What things in life make me happy? How can I find joy? How can I find joy in everyday things? My dog, my garden, my home, my family, my friends. I can list lots of things that make me happy, but I couldn't when I was in that place. But as I do that, I'm attracting more and more of good things. I'm attracting more things to love. And I'm feeling that love regardless. So when I talk about falling in love again after a narcissistic abuse, 
This is the love that I'm talking about. I'm talking about love, appreciation, satisfaction, joy. That's what you were put here for, for those experiences. So before you go looking for someone else to love, love yourself. Because when you love yourself, you'll find so much more to love. And it may be that the most wonderful person comes into your life who knows what love is and matches your idea of love. The narcissist never matched your idea of love, but because yours was so disjointed in the first place, you weren't quite sure, maybe I want that, but maybe I don't deserve it. They matched that with their inconsistency. And so you gave, you gave so much and they took. But when you love yourself and you focus on your own happiness and you focus on finding joy and loving the world and everything in it unconditionally, you'll attract a different type of person and you will fall in love again. I'm aware that some of you may think this is all I'm referring and that's absolutely fine. I'm sharing what has worked for me. I'm now open, I love life, I love people, I feel love flowing through me all the time. I hope that it radiates through the screen that I am feeling love and loved. And this is what I want for you. So it is possible to love again, you just have to shift your perception. I really hope you found that helpful. I'd love to hear more about your own stories. Don't forget, I do have the free email course available, um, Blueprint for Life After the Narcissist. And this part of what I've talked about is part of the course. It's an email course. I send you five emails, one each day, with exercises in it. You work through different things about, about yourself, about others, and about the world in general. And it will really help you with this self-love process. If you'd like to know more, the link is on the screen. I'll also pop it in the description below. Do take care of yourself and speak soon. Bye-bye.